Russell in the shotgun. Looks in the corner. Touchdown, Baylor! I want you to watch this ball. He just throws this with unbelievable touch. Russell over the middle. Touchdown, Corey Coleman. And was he open in the middle of the defense? That's when we're really good when we can tempo a team and get after him. So, always pushing that. Russell up the sideline. Zamora goes up high. Has it. And tiptoes into the end zone. Our next guest had 35 total touchdowns his junior season and was the first quarterback under Kendall Bryles starting out his first year as the offensive coordinator of the Baylor Bears. Seth Russell is with us now. Seth, I appreciate you you hopping on with this, man. And when people are talking about this offense, Arkansas fans are really curious to know what they're going to see. As a guy that ran it, what's the best way that you would describe Kendall Bryles' offense? Well, Ty and Tom, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, you know, it's always great to, to get back and, and talk football with, with guys that know how to talk football. And uh, to kind of answer your question, one of the – being a part of it, you kind of consider it controlled chaos. Um, now, there's a lot of intricate parts and pieces that dive into it, but whenever you're watching it, it's just – it's so exciting and being inside of it um, – it's just like it's a it's, it's a tornado, it's a hailstorm of just of just amazing play after play, you know, going deep, running the ball. It's just you just never know what's going to happen, and so it's uh, being a part of it was definitely <laughs> uh, a chaotic sense in itself, but also everything was very controlled from the inside. Seth, what did Coach Bryles teach you about the quarterback position as a whole? Yeah, so one of his one of his kind of big main teaching points was just trust the system. You know, trust your arm, trust the players around you, um, and then also trust you know that that the coaches are going to do what they need to do. Obviously, <laughs> I think early on I tried to because they gave me a lot of freedom to kind of change the play or audible or adjust to whatever it is. Um, I came to the sideline after one series that I had changed a couple plays. He he sat down next to me and said, hey, Seth, trust the system. Trust us. Play football. Quit thinking. And just do what we need to do because it's proven time and time again that we've been successful with what we've been calling. And the players that we've recruited and brought in will make you look really, really good. Yeah. That gives us a little insight to his style. Let's drill down a little deeper on his style and who who Coach Bryles is as a person. It's Sam Pittman, the head coach, has made it clear he wanted to hire good people, high character. No one ever says they want to hire the opposite of that. But tell us who he is as a guy, who he is as a man. What what did you enjoy just in spending time with him off of the field in a meeting room or watching film? Yeah, so being at Baylor, we were basically, you know, you had, you know, Art Bryles, which was his dad. You had Coach Levy, who was his brother-in-law. Um, he had one of his best friends he grew up with in high school um, as a as a receivers coach. Um, he had an offensive line coach who had been with Coach Bryles for many many years, and it is I consider them my second family. Um, you know, Coach Bryles, Kendall, and and Sarah and his and their three kids. Man, they are just they're amazing people. Um, they'll do anything. They'll run through a brick wall for you. They're just those they're those types of folks that. They'll lay it on the line. They'll put their neck out there for you because they, I mean, that's just the type of people they are. Um, you know, they're going to continue to fight, continue to to claw to be the best. You know, Bryles is, Kendall's always in the film room, um, you know, drawing up schemes, uh, talking through different schematics of the, of, you know, downs, whatever it is. And he does a really good job of challenging whoever the quarterbacks are in the room. Um, but one of his big, you know, main things that I really liked about it was he was very family centered, family focused, and uh, really thrived off of, you know, seeing his people be successful. What's important to click early, whether it's Felipe Franks or or one of the other guys that is going to be in the quarterback room? What's important that has to click early whenever they get back on the field? I know they're doing the, the Zoom distance learning stuff right now. What has to click early with Kendall Bryles to make this offense go for these quarterbacks? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I guess kind of the cliche saying is people need to buy in. Um, but I think with him is is being able to be 
the repetition is kind of was our big focal point was getting in, going fast, being productive, being accurate with the ball, making plays, catching, you know, hitting the run plays where they need to run. Um, I think the initial thing that needs to start is obviously with the quarterback. Um, that's going to be a huge, huge focal point. Um, I consider the system to be very quarterback friendly. Um, it's a completely different style than what Arkansas, I feel like, has been used to. You know, with a heavy run game, has been the focus. Um, now it's going to be more, you know, split 50 uh, 50, but it's going to be bigger plays. It's going to be, you know, we consider our short game our run game. On top of that, you know, three, five yard gain is, is a good run. Um, but being able to have the run pass option, uh, be able to execute on that, but it all starts with the quarterback. You know, getting the ball where, putting the ball where it needs to be, and just making good, productive plays. We're speaking with Seth Russell, former Baylor quarterback, here on the Morning Rush. Seth, going from the Big Twelve, then he moved on to Houston, then Florida State, and I think he was at FAU at a point in time as well. How do you think he's going to tailor his offense towards SEC talent and speed? Yeah, you know, I think he's done a great job of adapting. You know, obviously, each system has their specific players, whether that's, you know, 6'5", slow guys, or if that's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, really fast, quick guys. Um, and he's done a really good job of adapting, kind of going through, you know, going down to Houston with Derek King. Um, you know, he's a shorter guy, but he's a runner. And so just really making and adjusting the offense to adapting around his players. I think they've done a really good job of being able to do that. And then that's out to FAU and then Florida State. And obviously the, the numbers kind of speak for themselves as they followed. Um, but I think with him, they do a really good job of just making sure that each player that's out there is out there for the right reason, um, that fits into the system, whichever way that may be. Um, and they just, you know, being able to execute at a high level. Seth, you mentioned what he brought to the quarterback room. Did he recruit you as well? I, I tried to look on 24-7 Sports last night. It didn't list who recruited you. Did he recruit you to Baylor? No, so the, the one of the main coaches that recruited me was Philip Montgomery, who's now at Tulsa. Um, D.C., Philip right? The, yeah, yeah. He was the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach there at the time. For So going into my junior year, he had just accepted the head coaching job at Tulsa. And so that's whenever we made the internal transition to making KB from receivers coach to quarterback offensive coordinator. And so on that note, uh, the reason I ask is because Coach Bryles has really kind of made waves in the quarterback recruiting trail. Caden Salter is one of the most highly coveted. I think he's the number one dual threat quarterback in Texas. He's considering Arkansas. They signed Malik Hornsby in this last recruiting class, who is one of the better quarterbacks in the 2020 cycle. What do you think he brings to the table in terms of recruiting quarterbacks to Arkansas? Yeah, I think it's uh, just his reputation, his record, um, the way that the system is set up. Like I said earlier, it's very quarterback friendly. You know, I don't think any quarterback out there just wants to hand the ball off, you know, 75, 80 percent of the time. They want to throw the ball deep. Um, they want to make big plays. They want to put up big numbers. Um, they want to win, you know, Maxwell Awards. They want to win national championships. Uh, they want to be the face of the university. And that's exactly what type of system that KB brings to Arkansas is that highly sought-after system that quarterbacks want to be a part of. It's, it's so... Uh, it, it's just so cool, and one of it, it, it's just one of those systems that you're like, you kind of drool over, I guess to say, um, and that's and that's what system you want to be a part of as a quarterback. Seth Russell, former Baylor quarterback who played under Kendall Browns when he was the offensive coordinator there, is with us here on the Morning Rush. Your Baylor Bears are much like Arkansas, going through a transition this year. Uh, new to the head coaching position at both schools, Sam Pittman at Arkansas, Aranda there. Well, what do you think the challenges are when you look at? You know, the lack of practice, the lack of spring, uh, all this chaos in our world right now. How do you think programs like Baylor, like Arkansas, like Missouri, like Ole Miss, like Mississippi State, how do they 
how do they fare going through this transition year with everything else going on? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's unprecedented. You know, there's there hasn't been a year I don't think at least at least in my since I've been a boy since I've been alive is people have not been able to go through summer spring workouts. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of challenges early on, probably within the first two, probably the first half of the season. There's going to be a lot of heavy challenges. I think one of the big factors that I feel like a lot of people are going to face is hopefully not, but injuries. Um, I think that's going to be something because, you know, playing at full speed, not having done it for however long can be a big factor. Um, and also just accountability with the players. You know, are they doing their work on the outside? Are they doing, are they staying accountable? Are they keeping each other accountable? Um, but also with the new coaching staff, you know, there's different schemes, different, you know, styles of play that, that they bring in. And even though they're having the zoom meetings, I mean, that's, it's something, um, but you're not going to get the most out of it as you could, if you were meeting in person, you know, meet drawn up on the board, you know, taking notes, whatever that may be. Um, I think even with a, even with a system that's been set in place for several years, they're going to have their challenges. Um, just due to you know, position changes, players that have gone, players that have come in, um, but I think it's it's going to be an interesting start to the season, to say the least. Yeah. But you know, I think everybody has to go through this, and so it's it's not like it's an unfair advantage for one or the other. Uh, but I think it's going to be something that's going to be interesting to watch, um, at least from the outside, as well as you know, kind of get some input from the inside with folks that are still playing and I'm still good friends with. Yeah, I saw where Sam Pittman, the Arkansas coach, said yesterday there would be a conditioning test on day one when everyone returns. <laughs> what what percentage <laughs> of players do you think are actually uh, holding themselves accountable right now to, to the to the proper diet to all the conditioning? It's not a hundred percent. What what would be your best guess on these guys doing what's what they're supposed to be doing right now? Yeah, so I mean, let's say if there's there's a hundred people on the field or on the team, you know, eleven on offense, eleven on defense, eleven on special teams. If those guys that are starters know they want to be starters, probably, oh, well, maybe around I would hope sixty-five to seventy percent. Okay. You know, if you, if you add in all the right, but realistically, I don't know, maybe around 55, 60, maybe the right type of condition. I feel like, I mean, because in a team, you can really push yourself and hold each other accountable, but you know, by yourself, you know, you, you do your, your sprints, you kind of get tired, you sit down, you take a break rather than continuing to push through and, and you know, have somebody else there beside you that that's driving you, um, 12-ounce yeah, curls. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking with Seth Russell here on the Morning Rush, former Baylor quarterback, played under Kendall Bryles. Seth, your first season as a full-time starter, coincidentally, was Kendall's first season as the full-time offensive coordinator. At any point through the season, did he seem nervous or was just as flawless as it seemed as it was on the field? No, there was there was nothing nervous about him. I mean, he's a stone-cold killer. Like, he knows the system like the back of his hand. I mean, he grew up in it. He lived it. He lives it literally with his dad. Um, he developed it. Um, I mean, it was just a, it was a seamless transition uh, between Coach Montgomery and, and KB. Um, you know, obviously KB brought in his kind of, you know, different style of whatever it was on the offense, um, running game, passing game. Um, but yeah, no, he was, he was excited about it just as, you know, I was, we just basically kind of one of the big art brows. One of his biggest things that he said to me was go out and prove yourself. And so I think I, and KB took that approach every single day. We always had, you know, we're little old Baylor. We're not supposed to be successful. We're not supposed to be beating, you know, big teams. Um, but we really, we're, but as a staff, as a team, as a program, we really kind of took that and ran with it and use that as motivation. And so KB never, yeah, he never had any nervous twitch or anything like that. He was like, Hey, let's just go out and do our job. 
said that probably didn't hurt that you were throwing to guys like Katie Cannon, Corey Coleman. I'm going to remember watching those Baylor teams. You had a plethora of great, great wide receivers and weapons around you. And Arkansas, Kendall's got a lot to work with, whether it's Traylon Burks, Trey Knox, Mike Woods, and some others. He's got some weapons. How important were those guys for Bryce, for you, and for Baylor's offense's success over years to have stud wide receivers? Oh, I mean, that's that's with any system. I mean, if you want to throw the ball deep, you better have somebody that can go get it and that can catch it. Um, but, you know, that also makes the small plays. You know, being able to take those five-yard hitch routes, break a tackle, and go 85. Um, that was kind of how we how we recruited our guys. The guys that we brought in were big-time players um, that worked hard on the back end, and all of it showed on the field. Um, just kind of, and then also, you know, not just having those big plays, but having the quarterback and receivers be on the same page more than most of the time. I think that's huge. You know, knowing the the different, you know, styles. If it's, if the guy's more of a high ball player, if he's more of a hey, just just put it on me type of guy. Um, and that's going to be one of the challenges I think is going to be faced early on with, you know, with whoever is at the quarterback position, whoever's going to be at the receiving position is really getting that timing down. Um, I think it's going to be huge, but, you know, just, just take each snap obviously very seriously because um, you're with a new offensive coordinator coming in. He's trying to figure out who wants it, who doesn't, who can make the big plays and who can't. And he will make a change if it needs to be done. Seth, one more serious question before we get into the fun ones. Your old teammate, Jared Stidham, looking like he's going to be the starter for the New England Patriots. How do you think he projects as a starting quarterback there in New England? Yeah, you know, I think he'll do a great job. Um, he's a smart quarterback. Um, he gets the ball out of his hand. He's got a you know really easy throwing motion. He can spin the ball really well. Um you know, he got a few snaps there um, early in the season, which I think has been, you know, obviously it's really good for him just to get some experience on the field. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen with, with the draft, if they bring in a, a more veteran guy to, to kind of coach him up, whatever that may look like. But, you know, if he, if he gets his opportunity, you better watch out. My man Ty here is always wanting to know about the best food spots. I'm just going to beat him to the question, beat him to the punch. But the, <laughs> the best food spots, is he, he's always looking for a good college football road trip and he wants to know where the uh-huh. good spots are to eat so he's got a family tie there to the baylor program Couple. yeah and you know you can you guide him i know he's gonna you know if there's football back he's gonna be going to waco um been uh, to seth been to cups been to health camp be, haven't been to georgia's been to fuego how do i need to go to georgia's for wing wednesday what are some other hot spots in waco that i need to hit up when i make it back there yeah, no, those are those are some great questions. Uh, yeah, so George's is obviously kind of a staple. Um, so Sammy and Kyle, so they're Sammy's the dad, Kyle's the son. They kind of run that joint. Um, Sammy would always come up to. Uh, they'd cater us every Thursday, pretty much almost every Thursday, and just you know we're basically family with us. Um, I mean, you got a few spots there. So there's a couple of new yeah. joints. You got Milo's, which is kind of a um, kind of a, a, a high, not a high end, but like a more of a fancier kind of breakfast, lunch type of place. Um, you got a, there's a couple of, if you're a, a, uh, what is it? Like a acai bowl, kind of fruit bowl place there. Mm-hmm. There's a, Oh My Juice. It's a small little joint there. Um, right there in downtown. Um, but there's just places popping up all mm-hmm. over the place in Waco, which is from the year whenever I started in 2012 to now. I mean, there's probably 60% more restaurants than what there were before. See, I got so to uh, I, I keep my eye on this guy over here because he'll be down there with Chip and Joanna. He'll be down there at Magnolia, <laughs> you know, looking at home decor. That's, and, that's not a bad place to go. Yeah, that's where, that's where my man Ty will be, down there trying to be a Chip Gaines lookalike or something down there. I don't know. I don't know if I could there find my real estate as, as successful as they've been. <laughs> Seth Russell, former Baylor quarterback, kind enough to join us. Again, he was the first full-time quarterback in Kendall Bryles' first year as the offensive coordinator, giving some really good insights. Seth, I appreciate you making some time for us this morning, and uh, hopefully we'll see that same type of offense that you ran at Baylor at first year in Fayetteville. Absolutely, Tom and Ty. I really appreciate you guys having me, and uh, we'll, y'all get after it. All right, man. Thanks, Seth. 
All right, good stuff there. Good spot. There's good spots to go do in Waco. Now, Waco has changed a lot since I was there when middle school, comparatively when I went there last year. It's uh, it's changed a lot, and there's a lot better food places to eat. Mm. I got to take you to Fuego. Really good yeah. taco All place right. down there. All right. I thought the football conversation, which was the meat and taters, there was really good. So, really good stuff.